Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Spanker and this is going to be our first episode of our Round the World tour in P3D. We've got here is Sky Vector, virtually a full world view on here. Uh, we'll just go around and we're going to plan a Round the World tour. And when I say plan, I'm just going to give you an outline of what I'm going to do. The actual flight planning for the, each individual flight is going to be on the fly. We just grab a look where is potentially interesting to, to fly to, and then plan it on the uh, on the day and fly that leg. What I want to do is incorporate a lot of airports, a lot of countries, a lot of scenery. Uh, so it's not just going to be a circumnavigation. That would be too easy. We're going to start off at the most southerly point I could really find, which is down in South America. There may be a couple of um, small strips which are a bit further south, but I found one here, which is Seymour Island, Sierra Alpha Whiskey Bravo, and that is going to be our starting point if we just quickly look in google earth so this is the google earth view of that island looks pretty interesting and there is the airstrip so that's going to be our starting point looks like it's a dirt strip something like that we're going to start there and proceed north uh, eventually we're going to whip up the east coast of South American cont uh, continent. I want to visit the Falkland Islands up around South America, Caribbean, Bermuda I want to have a look at. We're going to zigzag across Central and Eastern USA into Canada, the zip across. Greenland, Iceland, Faroe Islands, UK, Western Europe, into Africa. Uh, down we go to um, through Africa, which is going to be quite a, a jaunt. Southern Africa, skipping to Madagascar, up into the Middle East, back across some more of Europe, going to the uh, Northern Territories of Sweden, Denmark, uh, Norway, etc., bit of Russia, uh, then we're going to have to look at how we're going to navigate into India, around uh, the Himalayas, heading south we're going to get into Australia, uh, circumnavigate Australia, some interesting places around there, we're then, what I really want to do is I want to flip, I want to, I really want to go to Hawaii, but it's quite a large distance. Now we're going to be doing it in a, a DA, DA42 twin star. So I'll go and have a look at the range and plan that adequately. We might have to do some little bit of island hopping around here. Hawaii, we're going to look at Christmas Island. Down to some island hopping into New Zealand, Tasmania, before going back up north. Japan, a bit of China, a bit of Russia, across into Alaska, have a jaunt around Alaska, through Canada, I'll have a bit of a zigzag across Canada, again zigzagging through some interesting places in America, Mexico, and back down the west coast of South America. I really want to try and get to Easter Island at some point, so whether I do that on that leg or We'll try and find some way across here within range. Back down before ending back up where we took off from on Seymour Island. That is going to be basically it. Now for the first um, leg, we are going to fly quite a short trip. I'll just bump that into the plan. Seymour Island, we're going to fly, I think it's a, maybe a couple hundred miles to Isla Ray George and there's a 
Antarctica, TNT, ooh, whatever that says. Fan languages, so that's going to be our plan. That's a direct route. Um, basically, I just add that void to the plan. I uh, want that intersection to the plan. And then, so, oh, I don't want to do that. There's no other intersection really without going past, so we'll fly direct from there. Into here, let's just have a quick look at uh, what this looks like. Hmm. Sierra Charlie, Romeo, and Mike. Let's have a look on uh, Google Earth. So that's our takeoff point. Uh, it's pretty much north, so it must be out of here. He's the uh, that's another dirt strip, which is going to be interesting. Very little navigation here. It's probably there's I don't like there to be any ILS, so we'll see what we can get there. Oh, there's another. That looks, looks maybe that's a LA port there or something. But very remote. I think the weather probably will be interesting. But that's the flight plan. Uh, just quickly go back, so look at the distance. That will done 39 miles. It should be very interesting, so we will see you in the sim. Okay, so here we are. We are at um, in the Antarctic somewhere, and there's nothing here. We've got a bit of a gravel runway. Um, we're cold and dark in the DF-42. Active Sky Next is on. Um, we've got Track IR on, and there's a lot of ice. Um, I'll uh, when I boot up the uh, PFD, we'll have a look at what the outside air temperature is. It's about uh, I think it's about seven o'clock in the morning, uh, something like that. We've set it for. Let's have a quick look outside. Uh, there's a bit of an hill over there, and that's about it. It's not as interesting as I thought it would be. Uh, I didn't expect much, to be honest, because I don't think many people would want to fly here. Um, right, so let's uh, start it up. We're not going to be following any uh, checklists or uh, things like that. We're just going to crack it off and go so let's turn master switch on altitude fail all right so we've got outside air temperature of minus nine so it's not that cold to be honest it's not that cold at all get parking brake set and i'm going to turn fuel up uh, fuel on just lock them off that's fine. Probably forget something now. I'm just going to flip these on. I know. Uh, oh, flip that. Right. Yes, I've got it now. Flip them on. Master switch for the engines. Four, two, on. I think that's it. I'm going to stick our position light on. And. Peter we we need that on I think. Start the left engine. I'm gonna start the right engine. Just while that's coming I'm just gonna click enter on that. As you can see we're in the middle of nowhere. These engines warm up a little bit. A quick look over here. I 
we've got fire and we're going to turn the cabin heat on because it's bound to get cold in here and the defrost on. They're coming up very nicely. Okay, avionics master switch goes to on. And then we're just going to have a look at our route. Right, we'll try and program it this way, or uh, is it. Oh no. I can do it that way. It'll be probably easier for just setting that. It's just on shift two. Flight plan. There's no active flight plan, so I want to go direct to now. Our first one is MBI, I think. I'll just flip that into M. That's just the for um, literally at the end of this room where I can see it there. Alright. Enter that. We tube clips oh and to select a duplicate right so that's right and just go up so fiddly with the uh, activate that Flap on the next one is Udepi, which is a uh, uh, an intersection, I think. See if that's in the uh, system. Let's load that up now. New Depot, Argentina, that'll do. New Depot. And then it's... Uh, it's to the destination airport, which is... Sierra... Charlie... Uh, put it all down somewhere. Sherrod Charlie Romeo November, I think. Uh, is it Romeo Mike? That's it, Mike. Tenente I Marsh Martin. I'm there, George. Enter. So that's a plan in place. Uh, take that off now. And we can just take that off now as well. Okay, I'm going to set up our uh, PFD now. Uh, that's two units. I want some hexapascals. I want our wind on option two. It's got 23 knot wind. Uh, let's click back on that. Uh, what do I want? No, I don't want that on. 
that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Let's go back. GPS is set and that is it I think let's clear that off right we'll set at zero uh, altitude I'm going to set a cruise out of I don't know into the autopilot of about 6,000 might be good not too high that we can't see any landscape but we can always alter that uh, according to weather as well Right, I think we're almost ready. I'm not going to bother with tax lights. Landing lights straight on. Strobes are on. Everything's alright there. Let's just check. That's okay. That looks, everything looks green in there. Fuel full. What's it got? Yeah, plenty of fuel. The engines come back on that. Like I want to have uh, terrain on, so that's going to turn terrain on. Got a warning on there for terrain. That's okay. I'm not going to take off with any flaps. I think I think the runway is plenty long enough. Parking brake too off. Here's the runway. Now looking at the, the wind, it's 23 knots. I'm probably at the wrong end of the runway. I don't think there's going to be any traffic about, is there? One thing I haven't done, there's a building over there, I'll have a look at that. If we, one thing I haven't done is I've had a problem with this aircraft with the sensitivities on the rudder pedals. So, I may, I don't know what to adjust it, no, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it, I'm going to go to the opposite end of the runway. We'll taxi down to the other end of the runway. There's a chance to see what this little thing is here. Is it for tower or just an anger? There's something else over there as well, flashing away. Some sort of station that. What's this? This is a mobile control tower. That's interesting. Apparently if it was on wheels or on stilts. One thing I haven't checked, uh, if I go to control one is it? Uh, no static instruments on. Doors are all closed, that's fine. I don't want the uh, Pito cover not to be, up, be on when I'm taking off, so. I think in the A to A um, 
planes you can take off with a pitot cover on obviously you've no air speed indication or any anything like that and you um, you can't remove it when you're in the air because in reality you wouldn't be able to so it's um, realistic in that way but annoying when you just happen to forget it now what I didn't realise was this this uh, had a taxiway up to that, that point here. The uh, when I've set it up in P3D, I could only select select which runway to start on. There was no parking available or anything like that, so I just stuck it on the uh, end of the runway, shifted it off to start the video, and there we go. But there is a parking area up there. Maybe I should have uh, taxied up and parked up there, but it's too late now. Right, let's get to this end of this runway. It's very slippery. I'm probably going to uh, end up zigzagging off it because there's sensitivity on, uh, on the pedals. Yeah. Gravel runway. I don't think I've took off in this aircraft from gravel before. We're blowing a uh Bit of snow and dust. That's a nice touch, that really, isn't it? That it's telling me which way the wind's blowing. I've never noticed that before. Obviously, that snow and dust coming off the wheels is aligned with the wind. I think we've got enough runway here, I'm going to uh, just flip it round on brakes. Just line it up straight as I can. And we're ready to go. Trim is set to neutral. Feels locked on. Everything seems all right. Check, 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 check. Blah, blah, blah. Let's uh, start this off. Episode one. A little bit of uh, put a little bit of right air on into the wind. Very twitchy on the pedals. Bump it. Terrain. 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 Very uh, strong wind. Terrain. Could not hold it on. I had almost full rudder in. Terrain. Just about to climb. Gear was coming Terrain. Up. Terrain. 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 He'll shut up in a sec. Terrain. I'm sure. Terrain. 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 And I was telling us to make a left Terrain. turn. Terrain. Terrain. We are going to make a left turn. Let's have a look what we've got around here. And there's not much except snow and ice. We're only a mile from the uh, the voice, so it'll soon flip onto uh, 
Oh, of course, maybe I shouldn't have even. Uh... There we go. I'm going to make another left turn now. There's the strip we just took off from. And the snow and ice. Not just the strip we took off from. I'm going to pull the throttle back a little bit, about 85% or so. Well, to be honest, there's not much here. Get up to about 2,000 feet and then I'll uh, start looking at the autopilot. I just need to make a right now that we've picked up that GPS track. Alright, so I'm going to flick on the autopilot, which pulls up the flight director. We're going to stick in the altitude check and we're going to put in the, uh, the nav and flip that to GPS. So I have to turn the nav off for one uh, GPS on and then flip to nav. Oh, so I've pressed the wrong flaming button there. Have I got that GPS on or not? And now we have. Right, here we go. We can have a look around now, see what's going on now. That's uh, technically flying itself. We've got a big end headwind of 30 knots. Outside air temperature is still minus 9 at its altitude which I think is pretty warm to be honest well, so as you can see we were in MBI to Udepi we've got 65 miles to Udepi and over here we're looking at uh, 26 minutes uh, to go at 127 knots ground speed obviously we are still climbing no we're not cool climbing because that because I've pressed this button too many times we have stopped climbing so I'm going to go up to about 6,000 feet See that temperature come down. I really do uh, like this plane. That uh, it is a nice place to fly. One gripe I have, and it's not about how it's been modelled, how it's been simulated. It's about the actual plane itself. Is it's the view of the ground that you get. You can't see a lot of the ground because where this wing is here in this engine if it was just a wing we'd have all that area there that we could see what's going on the ground same there you are literally straining your neck to see anything close to you or to see anything directly below you've got a little tiny gap um, but that's not a fault of the uh, the developers that's a fault of the, the aircraft itself but it's a nice aircraft to fly, it's very, very responsive, easy enough to land. The takeoff bit I'm struggling with simply because of uh, the twitchiness of the pedals and the instrumentation. The GPS, I don't like the way it's um, the knob twists and squirts like that it, and it's very fiddly 
especially when you've got head tracking in, especially when you're trying to do it in this screen. So by clicking here, I'm trying to keep my head perfectly still. Uh, but I'll do it like this. You know, a touch screen would be better. Uh, to be honest, I think there's a lot better GPS units in aircraft about, but if that's what it's like in the aircraft, that's what it's like. Again, it's a, probably a little bit too far out. I'm playing this on a, uh, I think it's at 1440p on a 20 odd inch screen. I'm sat about two foot away from it. And I've got to, you know, zoom, move my head in, have a look at the numbers and things like that. Maybe I can find a, a, a better setting or you know, a better eye point, eye view point or whatever. But you know, to me, you'd need to play us on a big screen to really benefit from from all all this uh, information that's thrown at us. One thing I'm hoping I can find if somebody develops is the. Cirrus SR22. I've seen some real world videos of that, and them PFDs, MFDs, whatever we call them, are absolutely fantastic. They are, uh, they've got an eye infrared camera on the front, uh, which comes up on the, the right monitor. It has a simulated Google Earth type view on here, which is amazing I really hope someone simulates that because it's the aircraft I really want to fly at the moment all in all I do like this a couple of gripes about the aircraft rather than the the devs building it but other than that it's an happy place for me what I can actually do now is quickly look down here uh, click in to fuel as we can see we've got 650 range so maybe I was way out when I've said it I think you could do a thousand miles it's probably more around 700 max so my Easter Island goal may be a little bit out of its league however we'll uh, find out right what we're going to do I'm going to uh, just uh, pause the video so you don't get all these boring clouds flying past Anything interesting I find, we'll, uh, we'll recapture and we'll, then, uh, we'll see you on the approach. <laughs> 